Welcome back to the HMA Interview Podcast. We are excited to have multiple-time NCAA All-American and senior world silver medalist Adam Kuhn join us today for the 48th interview of the podcast. Before we roll the episode, let me fill you in on the latest at HMA Wrestling. First and foremost, we are very, very close to finishing up our next merchandise order, and we'll put the gear up on our site once we get it in. Also, our brand new Rockfin page is looking super clean, and we'd love it if you go check it out over at rockfin.com slash HMA Wrestling. Our content is completely free. All you have to do is create a free account on Rockfin. All right, enough from me. Let's turn it over to Adam Kuhn. Um, all right. So Adam, you know, you, you, you have a lot of, you had a lot of high school accomplishments, you know, world mm-hmm. teams, world championships, things like that. Um, when did you know that you wanted to compete division one and then eventually on the senior level? So back in high school, um, I was also really good at football. I ended up being an all state linebacker my senior year. Um, and was a couple time all state, uh, lineman. So I was getting a lot of attention from uh, college football as well. Um, I actually did decently in track. Um, I was an all-state, um, all-state three times in the shot put and all-state in the discus. So I was also getting recruiting letters for track. Um, actually, my first recruiting letter was for track. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, it was a handwritten letter. Um, it was actually really cool. Uh, awesome. I, I didn't take um, track as seriously as I did football and wrestling. I knew my love was for wrestling and for football. So um, I knew kind of track was kind of out of the question. I didn't want to um, compete compete there in, in college. But I spent a lot of time weighing the options between football and wrestling. Um, and there were days where I thought for sure I was going to be playing football in college. But um, – I don't know. There was just something in me that was still thinking wrestling. And then I was looking up a guy um, by the name of Stephen Neal. Ooh, yeah. And so I got introduced to kind of his story. And, He's a three-timer, um, right? A two-timer. Two-time NCAA champ and uh, world champ in 99. And then goes on and has three Super Bowl rings for the Patriots. So um, once I kind of heard his story, I was like, you know what? maybe I can follow along and kind of do the same thing. So I thought let's do wrestling and then try, maybe try to do the football route later. Cause I knew if I left wrestling at that point to go play football, I was never going to come back to wrestling. So um, that's why I chose wrestling in college. And actually my, uh, my senior year. So my fourth year uh, we were actually trying to work on um, seeing if I could play football my fifth year. Um, because I was only going to yeah. use uh, four years of eligibility, and I started as a true freshman, so use my four years for football, or sorry, for wrestling, and use my fifth year for football. But then, of course, I had to have my uh, labrum reconstructed, so right. I mm. ended up sitting my whole fourth year. Mm. Yep. So there was going to be an opportunity there, but didn't work out. And then I always knew that I wanted to wrestle in the Olympics, so. Um, it made for a really easy transition once college was done to move right into um, wrestling freestyle and Greco. How old were you when you heard Stephen Neal's story? Uh, I would have been in high school at, at one point, probably yeah. sophomore, junior year, somewhere in that range. Mm, and so, and then, and that's when you knew you're like, I can, I can do this too. And so, um, yep. so, you know, like I said, you're extremely successful football track academics, you know, what was that recruiting process like for you? And, uh, and, and eventually what drew you to Michigan? So I, uh, it was a fun little process. I ended up taking only two visits, hmm. um, one to Michigan state and one to Michigan. Um, every other place I just couldn't come up with a time, couldn't come up with a, um, basically a time that fit my schedule. Uh, just was yeah, very busy. busy. Yeah. They were the only two that I could actually make work. Um, and I actually went to both of them for both wrestling and I believe both of them for football too. Huh. <laughs> so I ended up taking um, a couple little visits there. Would they be this? Would they, would it be the same? Would you put two visits on one trip? So you'd go to Ann Arbor, and would you take your football and your wrestling visit at this at the same time? So it wasn't an official visit for the football ones. They kind mm-hmm. of brought you in for a game, so it was one of those unofficial visits. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, they weren't. They were two separate trips. I made sure of that too because I wanted to 
make sure I was, you know, going to talk with the football coaches, going to talk to the wrestling coaches and not try to mix the two. Right. Right. But the, the two official ones I did were both wrestling. I didn't take any official for football, but, um, it was a fun little recruiting process. Um, end up having one house visit and it was Sean Bormet and, um, uh, Joe McFarland, they both made the trip down and I ended up verbaling on their, um, on the one house visit we had. Uh, I had many conversations with, um, with Sean and he, just the, I don't know, just the, the way he talked about how he was going to um, make sure that everything was going to kind of work out in my favor, make sure that you know, it was a great academic program, make sure that I was in all these different things, as well as the biggest selling point that I had that he, I really loved about Michigan was when Bormat talked to me, he talked about how um, the different ways he was going to make me successful in college, as well as the different ways he was going to make sure I was successful post-college, hmm. that he cared about my um, Olympic dreams, that he cared about football, that he cared about all the other different things. So he's, he hooked me up with, um, our strength coach prior to, and I had conversations with him and he was the former strength coach for the, uh, us Greco team for a while. And then he moved over to Michigan. Yeah. So he's our strength coach here. Um, so I love working with him. Coach favors. Great. Um, so I got a chance to talk with him during the recruiting process and he talked about how he, um, has experience with Greco training as well as, uh, you know, he's got some guys on his staff that he can hook me up and get me some football training if I wanted to go that route. So they really were making sure that I was set for college as well as Mm post-college, as well as the academics at the time. I wanted to be an aerospace engineer. I knew that. And they, at the time, were the number two program in the country. Um, No brainer. Yeah. (laughs) No brainer. Yeah. Once I chose that, you know what? Wrestling is where it is. Michigan was the front runner. They came on a house visit. I verbaled right there. Mm. And did uh, did all the things that that Bormat said to you? Did they did they all be fulfilled? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. 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 Still, still great and great training. He still cares about you know. Even now he's the head coach and he's worried about his college guys. He's still calling me to say you know making sure that my mind's right, making sure you know quarantine's not getting to me. Mm. Um, we still have these conversations about how training works and all these different things. I'm still calling favor. Hey, what are some fun little body weight workouts I can work on. Hey, I got some dumbbells here. They're only 60 pounds, but Hey, can you come up with a dumbbell workout for me? So I'm still contacting these guys, even post college. And they're still working with me. If COVID wasn't going on right now, I'd be in the room working out with Bormat. and favors already said, Hey, the weight room is open for yours. He's still writing me workout programs. So these guys are still working with me even two, three years out of college. Mm -hmm. So they're still investing my life and doing all that stuff. It's great. That's, that's very, very special. So Adam, what was your, your freshman year um, at Michigan like for you? And, and what transitions did you have to make from high school um, to college, wh- whether on the mat or off the mat? I really had to make a big jump um, athletically because when I first came in, I kind of – this. so as I was coming in, the heavyweight was on his way out, Ben Applin. He was on his way out. So I was the only heavyweight on the team. Hmm. Um, there were no nobody else. It was you. Uh, yeah. It was me. So I kind of knew already that we already had an injured 97 and then there was a true freshman 97 and the other, and you know, another guy. So I'm the true freshman at heavyweight. There's a true freshman at 97 and then our actual 97 wrestling. So there's not really a chance that a 97 is going to bump up and take heavyweight either. Yep. So I kind of knew that I was going to be wrestling as a true freshman. So I needed to make sure that I was, you know, progressing athletically. So uh, it was great working out with Kyle Massey. He was with the RTC there, um, wrestled over at Wisconsin, but was training with the RTC at Michigan. And I I had gotten um, connected with him my senior year. He was running a camp at Fallerville. And while he was running the camp, him and I would kind of spar and stuff. And he used to kick the snot out of me. Oh, my just, word. He, threw the, it's, he was a leg rider at heavyweight, which is just about yeah. unheard. So yeah. He would just punish me on bottom. It was awful. Oh no. So I had to learn how to figure, you know, learn, you know, how to get out of, you know, boot, boot riding and, you know, all these different things. And as well as he was just extremely strong. So I had to work on the strength and all these different areas. So I had to develop real quick, you know, really quick to kind of fill that spot. Um, 
So that was one of the big adjustments I had to make was just kind of really step up my intensity, step up the technique that I was using, as well as the the pace that I wrestled the match at. So I remember um, I was undersized. I was only about 250 at the time, maybe. Um, and this is the range of the the heavyweights at that. Basically, when I, as I was transitioning through college, that was the transition for heavyweights being absolute monsters to – middle size athletic, athletic yeah. freaks <laughs> freaks dude yeah because i i mean i was going against you know tony nelson bobby telford all these just absolute monsters yeah, gwiz and, and people all. yeah they're just huge i mean gwiz was small compared to the rest of these guys like right. it was just <laughs> it was just crazy but um so i was way undersized at that point and um so i had to figure out what were the best things was i the best technician in the room no but I had a big heart and I had the best lungs. So I was going to make sure that I was going to, you know, if you're going to beat me, you're going to have to earn it. And I'm going to make sure you never want to wrestle me again. (laughs) So that was the kind of mentality I kind of developed my freshman year of, I'm going to push the pace and I'm going to get you to the point where you can't stand up in the third period. That's where I wanted to kind of get them. You may beat me, but you're going to be stumbling off the mat. Right. So that's the kind of development I had to get there. And then at, academically I had a huge uh, to a major adjustment to my academics where I was very used to kind of breezing through high school it was you know it was really easy concepts for me and then I learned what a curve was really quick <laughs> my first exam that I took um, it was calc 2 and I remember I got like a 44% on it oh I was like I'm not cut out for college. I can't do this. This is, there's no yeah. way I'm going to pass this. Da, 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 da. And then brings into thing is like, yeah, by the way, uh, we curve this really hard. So, you know, if you're in this range, you're this, da, 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 a 44% ended up being an A minus. It was ridiculous. Oh. <laughs> it's ridiculous. That's, so, that's a yeah. little, that's a lot. Yeah, it is. It was a stupid curve. But after that, I was like, okay, you know what? We're okay. But well, I my would- study, why would you design a test where yeah. d- like, like to get an A, you have to f- f- guess, you know, you have to get more than 60% of the questions incorrect, you know? Yeah. It was ridiculous. That's stupid. It was That's insane. So, you know, I made those adjustments of, okay, it's more about just like getting as many points as you can <laughs> Yeah. in a lot of these classes. So um, I had to change my academics a little bit to kind of figure out, how to play with curves as well as make sure I'm actually learning the stuff that I want to learn. So that was just a fun little transition that the academics were way different, but the athletics were a big, big jump. Mm. So that year, true freshman, you make round of 12 at the NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. Um, What was that experience? I mean, that wasn't like, obviously you had wrestled in big venues before, uh, but the NCAA tournament is, it's a monster, you know? Um, what was what was that like for you as a true freshman um, and, and being so close to, you know, All-American? Made many mistakes in that tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, so two weekends, two weeks prior was the Big Ten tournament where I was the number one seed going in. I had only lost a single match in the regular season, um, and that was coming a few weeks prior to it. And I ended up going 0-2 in the tournament in the Big Ten right, as the number one seed. And then I had to fight through in the back end because most of the heavyweights ended up qualifying. They had tons of spots for it. So I had to um, wrestle back through to kind of get the spots. And so I ended up taking ninth in the Big Ten. So I was just ticked off as can be. And um, I going in the SA tournament, I wanted to tell myself of, hey, it's time to kick it back into gear. It's time to show them what you're made of, da, da, da. And I was way too tense going in. Mm. Um, I ended up wrestling, um, beating a couple guys. I believe they were both two zero matches type thing where, you know, I got my escape point and I wrote them out just because right. I didn't want to do too much. I was way too tense. I didn't want to take that shot that was going to lose me the match. I didn't want to do all these different things. And then the quarterfinals, I had Bobby Telford, who I had beaten twice prior earlier in the year. Um, both were extremely close matches. And this one ended up going into ultimate overtime. And, um, I couldn't ride him out and then he ends up dropping to an ankle and just holds on for 30 seconds. This was before the drop down rule. Um, so he ends up getting the ride out to win the match. And 
I went back to my hotel room and just threw a fit. I was basically throwing pills around the room. I was I was smart about it. In other words, I didn't do any damage to the room, yeah. but I was I was throwing a hissy fit. It was mm. it was ridiculous. Um so and I had worked myself up so much that by the time that I had to compete again that night, I was exhausted. I was completely exhausted, mentally oh. drained, and I go into a match and wrestled just horribly. Um, it ended up, we ended up going into overtime and he took me down on a, a knee pick that mm. he had been hitting, trying to hit probably like eight, ten times during the match and I was able to block it off and then I just couldn't handle it in overtime and he ended up taking me down. So <clears throat> it was difficult. It was a really tough, tough loss to take, especially because you know I was ranked number one through a lot of the year and then to go down the way I did, I was really disappointed in myself and it took a lot to bounce back from, from that one for sure. So it was really, yeah, it, it hurts, still hurts to this day. Um, just the way that I, you know, not re- not so much the losses, but the way that I handled myself through the entire tournament was mm. just, it was disappointing, very big disappointment in my uh, career. So yeah. I really had to figure out a way to kind of turn that around. And, and what was the biggest change that you made between your freshman and your sophomore year? So I spent, I got connected with a group, Athletes in Action. Um, it's a uh, Christian group here on campus. There are a lot of campuses around the country. They're, you know, um, kind of similar to the FCA, um, if you're familiar with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Um, but I got connected with the guy here, Colby Kiefer. Um, he's actually the one who officiated my wedding. So you can tell he um, has really made an impact on me. And I just spent a lot more time um, on my spiritual growth that, you know, kind of saying that, you know, you know, I am, I am loved by uh, who I am and not by what I do. Right. So it was the, no matter the outcome of these matches, how, you know, if I win, lose any type of things that I am still, you know, Adam, I'm not identified by my sport. I'm identified by who I am. Right. So it was kind of a reworking the wiring in the mind of, I need to go out there and I need to compete hard. But the wins and the losses, take them and leave them. Hmm. You know, you're just compete to have fun, to do all these things. You don't have the weight of the world on your shoulders. Just go compete, go have fun. And that was kind of the really great summer because then I ended up making the um, junior the junior teams, both freestyle and Greco. And it was so much more fun competing at that point because I was able just to kind of compete free. And that's that was just great, especially after – you know, three months prior, just being devastated. <laughs> oh man, man. So Adam, you had a, you had an extremely successful college career, you know, three time all American, four time national qualifier, and you never placed lower than third. Um, what was your biggest regret from college? And that can be on the mat, off the mat. Biggest regret in college. I mean, really my freshman year, the way I handled mm-hmm. myself postseason was yeah. probably the, the biggest regret. Um, yeah, that's that's probably the biggest one. I no regrets from really the, any of the other competitions. I wrestled mm. wrestled well there. Um, academically, I did well. I'm glad I took the surgery when I did. Um, yeah, no, I, I I think I did it pretty much the way I wanted to. Is just that freshman year, I had to take that that big learning curve, which right. it's a regret that I had to take. But also at the same time, I think because I had to take that curve it made for such a better successful kind of way out Mm. so do Mm. i do i regret that point yes but at the same time i'm still kind of happy that i went through it you know Mm. what i mean so going into your your senior year um destroy your labrum correct yep what uh what was that that process like for you had you ever been injured before um how did you deal with the injury mentally? Um, Cause I'm sure it's, it's, it's a very disappointing thing to lose a season. Right. Um, yep. And you're, you're amping up for this, your senior year. And now you have to, now it's being pushed back. Now it's being postponed, kind of similar to what's happening here with COVID. Um, mm-hmm. But that's for everybody, but this was specifically for you. So what was that injury like? So <clears throat> it was, it was difficult in the fact of um, when I first kind of took that injury, I, I basically worked with my trainer um, just to say, Hey, Joel, 
I don't really want to be working during practice times. And he was very okay with doing that during practice uh, or not doing the rehab and stuff during practice. Um, so he could focus on you know, working with the other guys, but I hated working, um, doing all my rehab and stuff during practice. Cause I always looked out and saw all of them, you know, all the team working out and working hard. And part of me missed it, but part of me was also, you know, had a sense of embarrassment that I wasn't working as hard as them that, you know, in a way I was somehow letting them down. Um, so I was kind of battling that for a while, but then, you know, to really try to um, tell myself that I am doing what's best, you know, for my recovery and my recovery is what's best for the team. Right. Uh, doing the best that I can and doing, being consistent in rehab, being consistent to, you know, icing, you know, just healing is going to be the best thing for me and the best thing for the team. Even though I may not be competing, even though I may not be working out as hard as them, that I need to take the slow. I need to make sure it heals well so I don't have to do this again. So there was a lot of that mental wrestling between the kind of embarrassment of being in practice as well as um, making sure that I was doing it the right way. So one of the ways I combated that was trying to do my rehab uh, where no one could see me. Mm. Uh, that was just an easy way for me to make sure I was doing the stuff I did. So I made sure I came in early and was out of there before practices. Occasionally I'd stick around and watch practice, but I wouldn't stay long because I really hated sitting on the bench and just watching the guys, you know, work out and become exhausted just for some reason. It just, it still bothers me. So that's a big, big mental issue that I still deal with and really had to figure out for, for that one. Hmm. And then, um, you know, you come back, you're, you're, I guess, you know, well, red shirt senior year, I guess you could <laughs> say, um, and, and a consistent rival you had, over your college uh, was Kyle Snyder, you know, mm -hmm. and um, you, you both took matches from each other. Uh, and, and Adam, what is your relationship like with Kyle? Um, how, how much do you know him off the mat? And, uh, and, and talk about, you know, the dynamic you have between you two. Um, I mean, we both look at each other as, you know, teammates now we're both on team USA and, right. you know, not so much of teammates cause we're on, you know, Greco versus freestyle type thing, but you know, we're still Team USA. We have no, uh, at least I don't have any hard feelings toward him, and I'm sure he doesn't have any hard feelings toward me. We what about during college? I'm, oh, not, during, I'm not asking necessarily about um, right now. hard feelings. Okay. But no, yeah, I, I, yeah. it can be either. I'm, and, and not necessarily like feelings, but like how did you view him as a rival? Um, oh, I see. And, and, you know, more in a competition aspect. Yeah, uh, I knew he was, you know, obviously one of the best competitors in the United States. So mm -hmm. I wanted, I wanted a piece. You know, that's, that's just kind of the nature of it is I want to test myself, see how far I've actually progressed. Cause we ended up competing in the big 10 finals, my junior year and I, my redshirt senior grad year, I wanted to see if I'd progressed and, you know, I knew I'd gotten better. I just wanted to see how much better he had gotten too. So, um, I remember doing an interview, uh, early on in the season talking about, you know, me wrestling Snyder later in the year, how there's a possibility of it. And I remember saying like, you know, if the opportunity comes, I'm going to be ready. And I'm, you know, I really want to really want to just compete. So, um, you know, I just looked at it as another competitor, but also a really great competitor and a great chance to, you know, do something great. And obviously in that first match, I was able to beat him, but then uh, big tens NCAs, you know, the ones that actually mattered, he ended up getting me back. So, right. you know, fair is fair, but at the same time, you know, I wanted to put a little hiccup in his um, record, and I think yeah. I accomplished that. <laughs> Excellent, um, Adam. What do you? Okay, this is a little little topic shift, but but what do you <laughs> attribute to your success within the the sport of Greco Roman? Um, what 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 would you say are your biggest you know attributes and and uh, and, and maybe the behind the scenes things that you know we don't see? Um. Probably the biggest thing is the the success that I got in 2018 probably has a lot to do with um, I was an unknown. Um, I was unknown as well as I have a very kind of unorthodox Greco style. Um, just because I'm so heavily trained in folk style, I kind of had to make that transition from that, that folk style to Greco and a little mix of freestyle type thing. Right. Most of the Greco guys have a very strict kind of Greco techniques. Um, 
I had to kind of adapt because I was not going to be able to kind of go toe to toe with a lot of these guys in just straight Greco. I kind of had to mix it up and do some, you know, some weird stuff to kind of gain position. And one of the things that I found real, um, a lot of success in it was that body lock. And just because I, I throw it weird, I have a weird way of getting to it. Um, so without people even seeing any of it, yeah. it's very weird to get there as well as, Let's be honest, an over-under position is a 50-50 position. Mm -hmm. I just happen to feel very comfortable in it. So in my mind, it's an advantage to me if I get into it. So I just have a lot more confidence. Um, so the guys would let me get there initially because, again, it's a 50-50 yeah. position. They thought they could throw me from there. But I was so stubborn and <laughs> um, naive yeah. that I never believed that they could actually throw me from there. So I was throwing them first. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Just – probably my success kind of came from just my size strength and just kind of an unorthodox type way of wrestling Greco. Um, yeah, I'd say pretty much everybody would say that I, I don't really wrestle Greco like a true Greco guy, but from the outside they're looking in, they just see a wrestler. So, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And Adam, how can we elevate the level of Greco wrestling within the United States? What is that? What do you, what would you say is uh, the, the key points that we need to look forward um, you know, looking into the, if there's a world championships this year, next year, um, and, and these future generations of Greco athletes. It really starts with the kids level hmm. at the kids level. We are, we as a country are still so focused on folk style wrestling, right? Which folk style is great. But at the same time, the realization that folk style is only wrestled in the United States, you will not progress farther with it. Oh, but most of the folk style guys will transition right to freestyle. Correct. But there's a huge learning curve that happens when you go from folk style to freestyle. Some will make the, some will make that gap, but some won't. There's been some great folk style guys that never could make it in freestyle. Um, but, and as well, the same point is there's not really a great transition from folk style to Greco. Right. If we start the kids early and really, um, show how fun and how great Greco and freestyle are. Honestly, I prefer freestyle and Greco over folk style. I think they're a lot more fun. I think they're more fast paced. I think they're more exciting really. Mm -hmm. um, and I know a lot of people will, um, you know, counter that to yeah. the day they die. They yep. are folk style, <laughs> folk style the whole way. And the rest of the world needs yep. to change the folk style. Yep. 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 <laughs> Just the realization that, you know, I have been given such great gifts because of my freestyle in Greco. As I was saying earlier, that I hardly left the state for right. anything other than wrestling. And because of wrestling and Greco specifically, I was I've been able to go to I mean we're eight eight different countries now. Yeah. Um so I've been able to travel the world, expenses paid <laughs> because of Greco and freestyle yeah. as well. It's, it's great. I love, you know, I just love that. And I think that all starts down at the, um, you know, at the kids level, just the developing that love for wrestling and wrestling is not just folk style. It's not just Greco. It's not just freestyle. It's right. all of that. So how do you grow the freestyle and the Greco Greco spe especially needs help right now. Mm -hmm. You just got to start at the kids level and show how fun it actually is to throw, how fun it is to, um, strategize of how are you going to take this guy down without using your legs, how to, you know, all these different things. I mean, what is once the, one of the first moves that kids do? It's a head and arm. Yep. You see all these kids do it all the time. That's a Greco throw. Mm -hmm. So it's building that, that Greco is not such a weird thing that you can't use your legs. It's developing that at a young level. So it becomes more of a, hey, this is just wrestling, just slightly different yep. as we move forward. So that's how you grow it. You've got to start at the youngest level and kind of make it a, a common, common thing rather than just folk style all the time. Hmm. Adam, how can a fringe wrestling fan, uh, how can they become more invested in, in Greco-Roman wrestling within the United States? And, uh, and how can we as a, you know, as a community promote the sport of Greco more? Just... Yeah, I think it's just this keeping the coverage of it, showing how fun Greco is, show how exciting Greco is, um, using using your different platforms to, you know, show the great throws, show the great athletes that are all around. Um, 
you know, all around the world show these different things as well as getting kids involved in these different um, clubs, just really just growing the sport through having everybody do these things. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just kind of the same of growing wrestling. Just make sure when you're growing wrestling, you're also adding freestyle and Greco and folk style in a, you, you know, unique light that they're unique, but it's all wrestling at the same time. Hmm. Very, very interesting. So, so Adam, what, um, I mean, you've mentioned you have these three overhanging goals, right? Your, uh, Olympic gold, play in the NFL, um, and then an astronaut. Uh, you know, aside from that, what other goals do you have for your future and, uh, you know, within the sport or, or outside of wrestling? Really, those are the main, the main three that are really driving me. Um, obviously, like uh, the wife wants to go to uh, medical school, so a lot mm. of it's going to be goal of um, making sure she's doing well and getting her studies in, and she just right. recently took the MCAT and you know, all that stuff, as well as raising money for med school. That's really fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my <laughs> you know, gosh. So that's the goal of you know trying to get the money for that. Um, eventually, would like to, you know, stop renting and actually put my money to use on a house yeah. <laughs> rather than just throwing it away on rent. Um, so, you know, there's little life goals like that, that I, you know, want to achieve eventually down the road. We'd like to have a family, you know, that you type of stuff. But coach wrestling, maybe, 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 I don't know. Um, I've never really thought of myself too much as a coach. Um, but you know, you never know once I get some more training to it, I might end up being a decent coach. Who knows? Yeah. But you know, just kind of, kind of let that one kind of play out as is. Um, I might be a decent heavyweight coach somewhere, but you know, yeah. with them getting smaller and more athletic, I don't know if I can do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word! Some of them are some of them are fast. Uh, Adam, what? Uh, uh, here's a, here's an interesting question. I was thinking about it. Is Flow Wrestling posted? Um, uh, shoot, right on their Instagram, Spencer Lee versus Darian Cruz at the 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 Senior Nationals um, back in. December, January. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, here's my question: Do you watch the lightweights wrestle? Do you have a, a, a favorite, you know, maybe weight group, maybe a favorite couple lightweight wrestlers? Um, uh, I don't. I don't watch too much. I mean, I watch a, like the interesting matchups just to kind of see how they play out. Um, really, probably the only one I really follow lightweight wise is probably gonna be Stevan. Yeah. Um, part of it just because I know him and tech and I know him. He's a teammate and as well as he's just got freakish technique, man. <laughs> yeah. He's <laughs> those elbow pulls. I'm just, they're just, he's just fun to watch. So, I mean, I, I watch my teammates um, and I watch some like interesting matchups that I'm just kind of curious how they might work out. But do I really follow anybody other than, you know, teammates. my guys? Not, not really. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Okay. Adam, yeah. what other, uh, what other hobbies do you have? What else do you like to do other than, you know, be an astronaut and a football player and, you know, a, a wrestler? What else? There's, there's not, not too much other than that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, do have, I do have a few Lego sets back there. That no I, way. Yeah, oh, yeah. I got, a, um, I got a Saturn V as well as an Apollo Lunar Lander. So you nice. can tell where the hobby is on that one. But. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, I like building things. I like doing things with my hands type thing. So. Um, I feel like if I could ever get a garage or a place to work on stuff, it might be fun to do some woodworking or some just some wood projects or you know yeah. something along those lines. But as of right now, I kind of have to stick with the the Lego sets. It's about all you can do in an yeah. apartment. And how old are you right now? <laughs> I'm 25. Oh, you got time. You got yeah, time. I got plenty of time. <laughs> plenty of time. Man. Yeah. All right. So Adam. it's more just kind of developing the skills for um, aerospace and stuff. I've been trying to you know work on. Work on Russian. It's not going well, but working on it. <laughs> um, oh dear. Do some, do some computer coding. Just kind of keeping up on some skills from from college and. And where yeah. are you looking to get a? Where would you look to get a job at? You know, down the, I, down the future. So I know uh, I got a buddy who actually works out in Colorado Springs. Um, so that might be an option. Uh, maybe head to Texas, Florida. Those are the main ones for um, NASA and. Yeah. I'll still waiting on a NASA application. I actually submitted that during quarantine. So, um, waiting on to see if the astronaut selection will work. I doubt it, but you know, still had to put my name in the hat. So yeah. there's a lot of different things kind of going on there, but mm. my hobbies really include kind of working out and just 
kind of chilling. <laughs> hey, here's a here's an interesting question. Uh, what are your thoughts on on private space flight and and privately funded you know um, space organi- or space exploration organizations? For example, like SpaceX. What are yeah. your thoughts on that? Cool. I mean, cool? I'm I'm all for it. Yeah. It's it's great. It's you know they're they're doing their own thing. They're starting to make the industry maybe a little more competitive. They're right. Um, you know, I'm all for it. They had the great joint venture um, a few weeks ago with, you know, SpaceX and NASA finally opening up um, NASA uh, U.S. astronauts launching off of U.S. soil again. Nice. So that was a huge, huge event. Very happy for that. So I'm all for the commercial um, aspect of things. That's I interesting. Think it's great to get everything going. Because I've heard, um, you know, there have been, there's a lot of, I've heard that there's pushback within the you know aerospace community uh specifically towards spacex and, and privately funded commercial space flight um is is that true is there is there any animosity there 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 is but i think a lot of it just has to deal with the money side yep. um because nasa is government so yes. you have to go jump through all the government hoops that go along with it yeah and you got to make sure you kiss congress butt to make sure you get all <laughs> exactly. the money and your budget and all that other junk so SpaceX doesn't have to jump through any of those hoops. As long as they have money as a company, they can push forward so they can do things quicker. And a lot of the pushback comes from, well, if they're doing it quicker, are they uh, doing it properly? If they don't have to jump through as many hoops, then yeah, they can spend more time on making sure it's done right rather than kissing butt. So I'm for it. (laughs) Nice. Nice. And if you uh, would take a job with SpaceX, if the opportunity arose. Yeah. Yeah. I would yeah, I'd be you're for like, it. As long like, as they, hey, <laughs> hey whoever's going to take me up to space, I'm for it. <laughs> Adam, Adam, when did you want? When was the first time you wanted to go to space? I can't believe I didn't even ask. Oh, you about sh- that. shoot! As a little kid, you know, every yeah. little kid's dream is to be a policeman, to be a firefighter, to be an astronaut. You right. know, all that stuff. My little kid dream was to be an astronaut. And I never grew up. <laughs> Excellent. Oh man, <laughs> that's that's very very special. Um, yep. All right. As we come to the end of this interview, I just want to say like, thank you uh, so much. Like, like this was extremely interesting for me. I I was really looking forward to this basically all week. I'm really glad, you know, hearing how you, you couldn't fit like college visits into your schedule. I'm really grateful Mm -hmm. that you were able to fit, you know, my stupid little podcast (laughs) into your your schedule. Um, It's great. And it was a, you know, it was, it's just such a blessing to be able to talk to not only you, but also, you know, all sorts of other wrestlers and, and, and just like, you know, learn a little bit of your mindset, learn a bit about who you are as a person, but also, uh, you know, uh, make a platform for you guys to, to talk about what you want to do and have your voices be heard. So, um, you know, it, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you very, very much. And uh, before you have to go, uh, is there any last thoughts that you'd like to leave our listeners with a little nugget of information, a pearl of wisdom? Just, um, you know, the, the biggest consistency that I found through wrestling was, um, that there will always be a roller coaster that the biggest consistency is that there will always be ups and downs throughout wrestling, um, throughout life. And the one thing that I found to help me get through those lows is my faith in God. Mm. And so I highly, highly recommend, um, finding connections, um, with people, um, looking for Christ, search him out as well as find the people that will help you um, keep that consistency. That's how I got out of my low, my freshman year of college and all the lows that I've had kind of throughout. So um, for those of you that are searching, maybe going through a low, um, I I would suggest seeking Christ. Um, For those that are maybe going through a low, um, maybe try and connect with a pastor, connect with um, any, you know, someone to help push you guide you. Cause I know COVID, I know all these things are yeah. um, very, very you know, heart wrenching. There's a lot of um, struggle going on and there's a lot of frustration. And um, for me, I find peace in my faith. So I hope that you uh, hope that you, as well as all the listeners, they, they find peace in these troubling times. Mm. Adam Kuhn, thank you so very, very much for coming on. And thank you to our listeners for listening to uh, another edition of the the Home at Advantage Wrestling Podcast. I believe this was the 47th interview. So we have 46 other interviews on the podcast, on the website. And um, and, uh, and Adam, thank you again so much for coming on. So, uh, so glad to be here. I appreciate you.